I know for a fact he's been smoking pot for months now. But I figured, well, that's his business. Anyway, I thought that he'd knock it off. Well, a lot of guys smoke pot for a little bit and then drop it. Well, now, him smoking pot, you say you know that for a fact. Well, how do you know? Well, I saw him. A bunch of us guys went to a drive-in movie, and he used it right in the car. Crazy. Mm. <laughs> I was sweating. I figured they grabbed me and, and all of us if they caught him. Well, now, how do you know that it was marijuana cigarettes? Maybe it was just real tobacco and the cat was putting you on? No, sir. <laughs> I saw it. Well, he offered me one, and I got a good look at it. I didn't take it, mind you, but I got a good look at it. Well, the paper was different, and it looked handmade. And both ends were squeezed together. Hmm. And then there was the smell. <laughs> and the car windows were closed. Okay. Now, what about this morning? Well, like I said, he's late as usual. And he's rushing around, not getting anywhere, but rushing. Well, he opens his locker, and a whole pile of stuff falls out and on the floor. Well, lots of guys notice. <laughs> they made cracks about what a slob he was. They're just kidding. Well, one guy went to help him, and he pushed him away like he was nervous. I'm only two bunks away from him, so I got a good look. And as clear as day were two packets with white powder in them. They're about that big. Well, did he know that you saw them? I don't think so. He was in such a hurry to get them out of sight, I don't think he saw anything. Now, and that was this morning? Right, this morning after chow. Look, I don't mean to blow the whistle on anybody, but like with the pot, I felt he'd get over. But man, if he's fooling around with the hard stuff... Well, now, what do you mean by hard stuff? Skag. You know, heroin. It looked like that kind of stuff to me. We saw a movie once on drugs, and it looked like that kind of stuff. In many cases, the initial leads to narcotics offenses are provided by informants. Information received must be acted upon, but the special agent developing a drug case must plan every step with great care. He must be certain that all of his actions are logical and legal. I'd like to say thank you, man. You know, you've been real hip. Brought As us you've down just down. seen, a special agent has been informed that a private foster may be in possession of illegal drugs. A suspect has been identified, and a search of his possessions may be in order, but only when and if the informant's reliability can be established. All right. Good enough, dude. Talk to you. Bye. Bye. Yes, I've sent for him. Good. Good. An interview with the company commander may be a logical first step. He can provide needed information about both the informant and the suspect, and can also authorize a search in his company area. But remember that the fewer outsiders involved, the better, particularly in narcotics offenses. Every step taken at every stage of the investigation should be planned and executed so that there is an absolute minimum of public observation. Well, I'm glad it's Anderson you're asking about. In his case, I can give you all positive answers. He's young and has a lot of nervous energy that makes him seem excitable. But he's a very honest, serious, reliable soldier. One of the best I have. Lieutenant, now don't misunderstand me. I'm not questioning your judgment. But is that your impression of the man? Or do you have I understand. Uh... Well, Anderson's record is excellent. And just a couple of months ago, he turned in a wallet that he found over $400 in cash in it. He could have easily pocketed the money but he turned it in. I'd say he's conscientious, honest, and reliable. Hmm. Well, now, how does he get along with the other men? Are there any fights or any grudges, maybe? Or might he be out to get anybody? Out to get anybody? No, not Anderson. He gets along with everybody. He's well-liked. He certainly has no enemies in the platoon. Yeah. Uh, well, tell me, do you know if Anderson has had any previous drug training? Why, yes, he has. Just last week, the entire platoon attended a drug program. With the informant's reliability established, the character of the suspect can then be investigated. Thanks, Lieutenant. Now, what about Foster? 
Private Edward Foster. Go on, Lieutenant. Never mind the platoon image. This is important. Okay, sir. Now you've got a loser. Foster's a problem. In what way? Every way. Late, lazy, lax. Doesn't do his job unless you sit on him. Borrows money and doesn't pay up. Tries to sell everything he's got. In fact, we think he's pulled a few thefts. But we haven't caught him at it. Well, has he been this way since he joined the platoon? Well, that's a funny thing. Originally, he was okay. Nothing great, but okay. And then in the last month or so, he's gone downhill like a racer. Walks around in a fog. Doesn't make any attempt at anything. His appearance has gotten sloppy, too. Dramatic change, sudden deterioration of physical appearance and personal attitude, borrowing money and selling personal possessions, these are all good indications of drug abuse. It's more of a loner. The lieutenant's remarks will be recorded in notes by the special agent, since they are of importance in establishing the reliability of the informant and affirming the likelihood that the suspect is in possession of illegal drugs. Well, gentlemen, I hope Lieutenant Allen was of some help to you. Oh, yes, sir. For acceptability in court, a search warrant provided by a military judge is preferable, but when time is an important factor, permission can be obtained from the unit commander. So between what uh, Anderson told us, what he saw this morning, and what Lieutenant Allen said about both men, we feel that a search is called for, and quickly. Since the evidence was there this morning, it should still be there now. Therefore, sir, we'd like to obtain your permission to search Private Foster's personal effects. Before a commander may authorize a search, he must personally conclude on the basis of information presented to him that narcotics are likely to be on the premises at the time of the search. He must believe that the person furnishing the information is reliable and that he has a sound basis for his information. Permission to search Private Foster's locker and personal living area. The objective of your search will be illegal drugs and drug paraphernalia, and it will take place now. Thank you, Captain. The commander's permission to search and the reasons that led up to it will also be recorded in a written statement. Although the commander often assists in the actual search, his presence is not legally required. The suspect may or may not be present during the search of his possessions at the discretion of the special agents conducting the investigation, since his presence is not legally mandatory. The search must be thorough and methodical. The investigators should be equipped with containers and markers so that any evidence found can be safely packaged and correctly labeled. Hey, Dave. All right, anyone mark this down for me? It is important to take photographs and to keep notes as to the time, the place, and the items found so that all actions taken and discoveries made are thoroughly documented. The evidence container must be marked for positive identification of its contents, including the time, date, place where found, the contents of the container, the initials of the special agent, and the initials of any or all witnesses. Hey, Roy. Hey, Harry. How are you? Hey, listen, I got some evidence need to be entered to the room. Okay. The evidence must be handled with care to avoid contamination and turned over to the evidence custodian. The evidence must be receipted just like classified material whenever it changes hands. That's good. I think we got some good evidence. And At this time, do you want a lawyer? No. Okay. At this time, are you willing to discuss the offenses under investigation? Yes. Okay. The primary objective of a narcotics investigation is not just the identification of the drug user. It is more important to locate the supplier, the pusher, and to cut the supply line at its highest point. For this reason, every attempt possible to enlist the cooperation of the suspect should be made. With that cooperation, the supplier can be identified and the investigator can expand into more productive areas. Hi, right, Foster. By helping us, you'll be helping a lot of other guys to stay out of trouble. Investigators must ensure that the suspect is not induced to answer questions in exchange for preferential treatment in his case. No man. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? Well, where did you get the skag? Who sold it to you? All right, now look. I don't want to be put down on any lists, right? I mean, I got enough trouble now, right? 
All right, listen, that you don't have to worry about. Whatever actions we take will be so arranged that you will not be connected with them. Okay, so now, why don't you just get rid, get it up off your chest. Come on and get rid of it. The movies. The movies? Yeah, you know, the, the post theater, the guy that shows the pictures, the um, projectionist. He's the guy that told me the stuff. Well, when? Where? Where the machines are, the cameras. Upstairs in the booth? Yeah, in the booth. Uh, you go up there, doing a show, and you know, if he knows you, you can pick it up. Well, does he keep it there? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, it's not like he has a store there or anything like that. It's like, you sort of like place an order. Like for the next night. Well, how much? Nickels and dimes, fives and tens. Well, what's his name? <laughs> Look, all I know is that he's a GI and he works there part time. This guy's got nine million ways of making bread. Well, what does it, what does he look like? Uh, how did you come to meet him? Look, I don't want to get anybody else in trouble. The investigation should always seek to establish the chain of continuity and to establish all of the links in the chain. Who introduced the buyer to the seller? How and where is the buy made? What is the seller's source? Who sells to the seller? Is there a need for medical assistance? Is there a need for ultimate referral? And when I first came on... Where the hell were you yesterday? Couldn't make it. I got hung up with duty. Yeah, well, don't hang me up. I don't like holding this stuff for nothing. That's four nickels, right? A second suspect, the seller or pusher, has been identified. The next step is to verify that identification and establish proof of his illegal involvement. One method of doing this is to make investigative drug purchases or buys. Investigative buys are made with CID funds. Excessive multiple purchases from one source are avoided and the buys are kept at a reasonable level. Hey, um, I got this buddy, you know, uh, he wants to score. Is it okay to bring him up here? What kind of buddy? How long you known him? He's okay, I'm sure. He's a regular guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, look, man, I ain't looking at making bad waves, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I'm not either, you know. I got a good thing going, you know. I don't want to mess it up. Don't worry about it. I know him. Who is he? Uh, he's a guy. Why don't we all go down and bust no, the old heat top? This is, uh, Harry, Harry. Sam. Sam. Sometimes the informant can be used to introduce a special agent to the seller. Fill it up. Fill it up. Yeah. How long have you been using? About a year. I can handle it. Okay. Get your hands up and come out here where I can see it. When this is done, no action is taken immediately. The object is to establish the special agent as a customer and to divorce him from the informant. You want it too, right? Uh, yeah. Sure about that. Yeah. Oh, sure, but, you know, I, I have a possible big The objective is to try to move upwards sort of like from the seller the to other higher sources. And I'd kind of like to do what you're doing. Oh, you would, huh? Yeah. Make some big money? Yeah, I'd like to meet your supplier, set myself up. Well, I'm sorry, pal, but you can't. Well, how about a helper? No, no, no. It's a one-man operation. But if that possibility seems unlikely, sorry, it may be time to take direct action and apprehend the seller. And he wouldn't budge. Said if I had a market, he'd supply it sell me anything I wanted. But he was like a brick wall when I tried to move up to his source. Uh, we tried surveillance, but that failed to produce a supplier as well. Okay, so there's no go on that. All right, well, since he won't talk to you, then we'll go over and talk to Charlie Adams. I'm over DEA again. Maybe he'll feel like talking if we bust him with some stuff. Okay, it's time to move in on it. Right. Okay, now listen. I don't think it's gonna be good they have Harry walk in with another man. Might scare Sam off. But we gotta have the buy observed. So now what we're gonna do... We're gonna the objective, of course, is to make a strong legal case against the suspect, and direct observation of the buy is most desirable. The buy is preceded by detailed planning and extensive briefing of all who will be involved in it, including a representative of the Drug Enforcement Agency. In all doubtful cases, the plan should be double-checked before its execution by a CIDCJAG or a lawyer. This precautionary step will assure the legal validity of the plan and avoid the possibility of entrapment. Oh, yes, sir. We'll check that prior to going out. The money to be used in the buy must be identified and carefully receipted. 
that we don't have anything to blow this If an informant is to make the buy, he must be searched in advance to establish firmly that he has no drugs in his possession. If a special agent is to make the buy, assurance is made that he has no personal effects other than the marked money for the buy. Cash, you're going to pick up on, on the way out. out. Okay. okay. What else do you think of, Colt? I think we're all straight now. Surveillance should be constant, with the buyer kept in view as he proceeds to the site of the buy. I thought I'd miss you. Yeah, where the hell you been? You were supposed to I be know, here. I know, I know. I got stuck. Couldn't help it. What's the big deal? I'm here, ain't I? Yeah, well, the next time to hell with you. You got the note? Uh, no. Never got the check from home. But I got 80 bucks. You can trust me for the other 20, okay? Yeah, the hell with that. You got eight dimes, you get eight bags. You get the rest tomorrow when I get the bread. Now, come on. I want to get the hell out of here. Okay, okay. Come on. I don't know why you can't trust me for the other lousy 20. Yeah. Hold it, Sam. See how I did. All right, let's... Hold! Oh. Apprehending a suspect demands special attention. He must be given no opportunity to dispose of the incriminating evidence. The special agent's failure to have the full amount of money was deliberate to ensure that the seller would be apprehended not only with the incriminating identifiable money, but also with unsold drugs in his possession. The need for documentation continues after the buy has been accomplished. To protect the undercover status of the buyer, he is apprehended along with the subject. The buyer must again be searched, and the evidence must be marked for identification and handled carefully to avoid contamination. The evidence must be turned in and receipted. The money used for the purchase and the purchased drugs. And I came running up to him late as we had planned. A statement must be taken from the agent or informant who made the purchase and from all participants of the controlled buy. Okay. Yes, sir. Has all the uh, marked money been recovered? Yes, yeah, matter of fact, we have. And the, uh, again, the buy should be reviewed by the staff judge advocate's office. The key to making a successful investigative drug purchase is planning and attention to detail. Learn the recommended procedures and follow them. Pay particular attention to the identification and handling of the purchase money and the drugs purchased. They must be handled like classified material and a rigid receding procedure must be followed. Got all the Maintain close liaison with the staff judge advocate's office to make sure that you're always on safe legal grounds. The drug abuser and the drug pusher account for a high percentage of crime in our country, and the problem places great responsibility on the shoulders of the law enforcer. His integrity and professionalism must be of the highest level. And on the subject of drugs and drug abuse, he can afford to be nothing less than an expert.